Just say no to boring ass brands. We don't do boring up in here. I don't want to see any more generic boring brands. I want you to put your whole personality into it. So how do you do that? Tune into this video and I will share how to use brand archetypes to infuse a whole lot more personality into your brand. I will share what each of the brand archetypes are and give you some tips on how to incorporate them. Let's go. What's up y'all? I'm Liz Marie, brand strategist, creative director, designer, all things branding. And my mission in life is to help women and BIPOC entrepreneurs grow their brands, overcome the chaos and get super clear so that you can make more money and build generational wealth. Pretty simple, that's the goal. So today we're talking about brand personality and the concept is really pretty simple. Brands have personalities just like people do. And your personality as a brand is pretty much what makes you unique. In fact, it can be one of your biggest differentiators. You can see it everywhere. You know, Nike has a different personality than Adidas and they are very, very direct competitors. Personality is important, it sets you apart. And one of the simplest ways to define your personality is just to write a list of adjectives. But there's also a really amazing tool called a brand archetype. Brand archetypes are 12 different personality profiles based on human psychology and based on the history of storytelling. So they're kind of common characters or roles that you see all the time in films and movies and plays just that are commonly understood by people. And that's important because Part of branding is using our psychology that is pre-existing. We want to tune into people's psychology, into things that are already familiar, that are recognizable, and trigger those emotions that they associate with them. So the big benefit of using a brand archetype as the basis of your personality for your brand is that you're keying in on something that is tried and true. It's been used a bunch of times. There is a pre-existing framework for what this thing is like and people will really understand it and resonate with it pretty quickly. So what are the 12 brand archetypes? Let's get into it. The hero. Dun, 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 dun. The hero is one of the most popular and common archetypes that we see in brands and in storytelling. The hero is all about achieving a goal, persevering, and major, major accomplishment. The most important motivation for hero brands is achievement or courage. The goal is to improve the world through your courageous acts. Hero brands make us feel like we can accomplish anything. That is why they're so powerful. They use a really strong, confident, inspirational brand voice. And some common hero brands are Nike, Gatorade, LeBron James, LeBron James, Malala, real life figures who have persevered and accomplished amazing things and who make us believe that we can accomplish amazing things too. The lover. <laughs> Lover brands are all about intimacy. They want to make you feel attractive, sexy, connected to each other. They inspire sensuality, love, affection, closeness. That's what they are all about. They make us feel turned on, spellbound, more beautiful, and more connected to each other. Their brand voice is rich in adjectives. It is evocative. It is sexy. It is sensual. That's why they're so effective. You may recognize the lover in brands like Godiva, Tiffany's, Victoria's Secret, or in public figures like Prince, Marilyn Monroe, or even Venus de Milo. There are countless lover figures. Don Juan. It, it's a huge common archetype because it keys in on one of, of our most fundamental human needs, which is love and affection. That is why the lover is so successful. The Joker, the jester, or the comic relief. Jester brand archetype is about being the funny one, the party animal, the class clown. Their goal is to bring enjoyment to the world. They're all about having fun, keeping it lighthearted and silly, and they're here to make you laugh and have a good time. They're motivated by fun, laughter, joy and togetherness. And they're often known for being 
a little irreverent, for having fun, maybe a little mischievous. That is what makes them so unique, so quirky, and really endear us to Jester brands. When we engage with them, we feel amused, we laugh, we feel happy, we're maybe a little intrigued. It brings a little bit of joy and lightheartedness to our everyday life. And this is super, super popular in the advertising space, so common Jester brands are Old Spice, Geico, Ben & Jerry's, they have this fun, playful personality that really comes out in their advertising. And other figures might be Lucille Ball, Will Smith, the donkey from Shrek. There are so many comic figures that represent this gesture archetype and it's something really powerful to use in your brand to bring joy and fun and laughter to the world. What's up, dude? What's up? I'm the everyman. The everyman is all about being just the average guy, the average person. It is about being down to earth and making everyone feel like they belong. Every man brands want to connect each other by showing how we are all the same. We are all just normal, everyday people living our lives and we all have the same goals at the end of the day. Every man brands want to create a welcoming community where everyone is a part of it. And so, Everyman brands are very down to earth. They're practical, they're reliable, they're a little bit predictable. You know exactly what to expect. You can count on them, just like your neighbor or your uncle. They're just, you know, always around for you. And so they share that friendly, supportive, maybe a little bit folksy tone of voice because that's what makes people feel familiar and connected to you. Some common Everyman brands are Target, Ikea and Levi's. Levi's really probably started this whole thing when they uh, emerged over 150 years ago and they created pants for the working man, the down to earth man. That's how this all began. You see this all the time on TV with characters like Homer Simpson, the quintessential everyman, or Sister Sister, just to young kids growing up and going through everyday shenanigans or in movies like Dodgeball where the team itself is called the Average Joes. It just represents this idea that we're all the same, nobody's better than anybody else, we're all included and we're just gonna have this fun welcoming community. Oh, come give me a hug, I'm the caregiver. The caregiver brand archetype is all about service, support, love and care for one another. Their basic goal is to literally care for and protect everyone. They're all about support, service, gratitude, giving back, compassion, all of these good, warm, fuzzy feelings. And so caretaker brands, they're warm, they're caring, they're reassuring, they're full of love. They make you feel like, ah, oh, everything's gonna be okay. Just like a warm hug from your grandma or a bowl of hot soup on a cold day. Caregiver brands make you feel good inside. Some common caregiver brands are Campbell's Soup, Johnson & Johnson, Tom's, and some public figures are Princess Diana, Martin Luther King, and Mother Teresa, all of whom have de dedicated their lives to making other people's lives better and acts of service. The Ruler. Ruler brands are all about creating prosperity and success. They're motivated by power, prosperity, status, success, wealth, and control. One of the tactics ruler brands use is to exert their leadership, their authority, and their superiority. They define what status means. They define what success looks like for people. They're polished, assertive, confident, refined, elegant and sophisticated and they leave us in awe and admiration feeling like we need what they have you may have guessed that luxury brands are almost always ruler brands that's like mercedes-benz louis vuitton rolex all of these super high-end status symbols use the ruler brand archetype you see this in the world as well with figures like the godfather Jackie O, or actual queens like Queen Elizabeth or Cleopatra. If you want to use the ruler archetype, remember it to be about strength, control, and success. The creator. Creator brand archetypes are all about creating something new and expressing yourself any way that you can. They want to create something of enduring value, something that's meaningful to the world, 
something beautiful. And so they value self-expression, imagination, and originality. Creator brands unlock your imagination or empower you to develop a new artistic skill. They tend to be very artistic, visionary, inventive, non-conforming, and they use very adjective-rich language, just like you would imagine when you're writing a beautiful poem. Creator brands leave us feeling amazed, inspired, and empowered to create something of our own. Some awesome creator brands are Lego, Adobe, and Nintendo. And you can see this archetype in public figures, personas like Steve Jobs, Alice in Wonderland, or Frida Kahlo. Artists, visionaries, these fall under the creator archetype. The innocent. The innocent is all about happiness, simplicity, pleasantness, and morality, as their name implies. Their basic need is safety, feeling like the world is a safe and nice place. Ruler brands tend to be pure, young, optimistic, lighthearted, simple, cheerful, maybe a little bit naive. They leave us feeling warm, fuzzy, joyful, and full of hope. Popular innocent brands are Coca-Cola, Dove and Snuggle, or characters like Forrest Gump, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, or even the Dalai Lama himself. The Sage. Sage brands are wise. In fact, their main motivation is to help the world gain insight and understanding. They're motivated by truth, knowledge, curiosity, and intelligence. And their strategy is to encourage learning and show us the path to enlightenment. Sage brands tend to be very factual, research-driven, guiding, truthful, and nurturing in this path towards higher knowledge. They make us feel educated, smarter, and engrossed. Popular Sage brands are Google, PBS, and TED, as in TED Talks. Sage icons are Albert Einstein, Yoda, and Neil deGrasse Tyson. The Explorer. Explorer brands are all about exploration, adventure, the joy of discovery. They want to experience life to its fullest and indulge their curiosities by finding out what the world is all about. Their main drive is freedom, and so they're constantly pushing the limits and finding new ways to enjoy life even more. Explorer brands tend to be daring, inspiring, and full of wonder. They make us want to get out of our comfort zones and do more, like Jeep, NASA, Patagonia, National Geographic, SpaceX, pretty much anything around pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and exploring new territory. Usually outdoor brands, a lot of car brands tend to fall into this category. And you can see this in figures like Indiana Jones, Amelia Earhart, and even Mulan. The Out. Also known as the Rebel. Outlaw brands are all about non-conformity. They want to destroy what isn't working in the world and forge a new and better way. They reject anything mainstream or a little too popular, and they're all about being the misfit. They're motivated by liberation, change, independence, and a new way of thinking. They're very, very progressive. Their strategies are to defy, disrupt, and denounce the status quo. Outlaw brands tend to be very raw, candid, honest, rebellious. They don't really give a fuck. And this makes us feel stimulated, thrilled, intrigued, it's very provocative. It's also very uncommon. It makes us feel unique and explore the parts of us that don't fit into a predetermined mold. Outlaw brands are disruptors like Harley Davidson, MTV, Virgin. They have the big personalities. And some of their icons are actual political activists like Angela Davis, Guevara, or even figures like Robin Hood. My own brand is Half Rebel. Ta-da! The magician. Magician brands are all about making dreams come true. They're motivated by transformation, belief, discovery, and mastery. Magician brands help you craft a vision and bring it to life. They're all about imagining and creating a better future than exists now. Magician brands tend to be visionary, imaginative, idealistic, charismatic, confident, expansive. They're often what you think of when you think of a leader, someone who can get you to believe in a really, really big idea that seems so far-fetched, but they're just so charismatic that they've got you in. They make us feel enchanted, powerful, and like we're on the cutting edge of the future. The best example of this is Disney. 
but you also see it in Polaroid, in Oprah, or of course in movie characters like Gandalf, Harry Potter, or the genie from Aladdin. Now that you've met all 12 archetypes, how do you find yours? Well, first, you wanna pay attention to what draws you in, what just feels like you. There's this resonance that you may feel deep down in your stomach that this one gets me, this feels like me. But first, it has to be true to you, true to who you really are as a person or as a brand. You also wanna think about what your audience cares about, what is gonna resonate with them, because really that's who you're doing all of this for. So there should be a connection between who you really are and what your audience would be interested in. So think about your audience's emotional needs. Most of those archetypes speak very clearly to an emotional need that they fulfill. Connect that to what your audience needs. And third, you wanna think about what your competitors are doing. So a great example is in the outdoor equipment hiking gear space. Most of those companies are going to be explorer brands. And that doesn't mean that if you're starting a company in that industry that you can't be one too. You just wanna be aware and think about is there an opportunity to differentiate or does it make the most sense to continue and build our own Explorer brand because it's something that our audiences are going to already understand and expect or maybe we could combine two different archetypes and put an extra little spin on it. Once you've narrowed in on the one or two archetypes that you're going to use, I recommend picking one to two. For example, I use the Rebel Magician for my brand because I'm a pretty good fit of both. I wouldn't recommend picking any more than two. Once you've narrowed in on your archetypes, you can use those to define the direction of your branding, of your messaging, of your tone of voice, your personality, of course, of the look and feel of your brand. Start to use it as a reference point. It gives you a great place to start brainstorming. What should my brand look and feel and sound like? What would a ruler brand sound like? What would the creator act like? And then you can check back and see if what you're creating or what you already have for your brand actually fits that criteria. Finally, there are no rules to this. It's kind of just a guideline. Think of it like a personality test. It's gonna give you some insight into who you are, but it's really up to you to make it your own. So we've talked about what brand archetypes are, each of the 12 profiles, and how you can use them in your own branding. For more detail into each of the 12 archetypes, download my brand archetypes guide. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Stay badass. All right, y'all, if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff down there. And check me out at, at LizMarieStrategy or LizMarieStrategy.com.